Hello and welcome to CS222. This is Dr. Gistwicki. I prepared this video so that you can bootstrap your system configuration. You can get all the software you need installed so that you can write your first Java program using test-driven development and we can hit the ground running in the first week of the course. So the first thing you need to do is get the uh, JDK version 8. So I'm just going to do a search here for uh, download JDK 8. That gets me right where I need to be. JDK stands for Java Development Kit. Uh, based on your operating system and your architecture, just download the one that you need and install it. It should be pretty straightforward. When you install it, write down where you installed it on your hard drive because you're going to need that in a couple of steps. The next thing you're going to need is IntelliJ IDEA. So uh, again, we just did a Google search. We'll go to IntelliJ IDEA. This will be our integrated development environment, our IDE. So we'll click on download here and we want the community version. Um, if you want to buy the ultimate version, that's up to you, but I'm happy using the free community version. Um, depending on what operating system you're on, you'll see different options here. Go ahead and download and install that. The installation process for IntelliJ IDEA will include a lot of options that uh, might not make much sense to you since you've not used it before, but don't worry, the, the defaults should be fine. Um, just choose all the defaults when you install it and you'll be good to go. Uh, then you'll be able to run IntelliJ IDEA It'll look a bit like this. Here. Um, so the first time we go to create a project, what we're going to have to do is register the JDK with IntelliJ IDEA. Now, I've already done that, so I can see the option here. Um, but you're going to see something more like this. And that's not what we want. We don't want the platform plugin SDK. We need to actually create a project using JDK 8. So what you'll do here is uh, click on New, and then JDK and navigate to wherever you installed that, right? So if you're on Windows, it's probably in Program Files, for example. Um, so once you navigate to your JDK and it gets recognized here, you'll be able to choose JDK uh, 1.8, and we want that, and all the rest of the, the uh, defaults should be fine. So we'll click Next, and uh, oh, we have to give this a name. So I'm going to call this uh, Hello CS222. Let's call it Hello World. That's a good name. All right, now make sure it's in my screen capture area. Um, now it's been a while since I've run this uh, from a brand new installation, but you might see something that looks more like this, which is kind of intimidating because there's nothing to see. Um, so what you need to know is that if you, if you click on this little tool in the corner, um, that'll uh, show you the, these frames on the side, and you can use those to navigate different views of your project. Um, I spend most of my time with this, this project view open. And if we open this up, we see it's uh, really just an empty project. Um, SRC is the source folder, and that's where we'll, we will put all of our production code, uh, the code that we would ship to a customer or a client. Um, this IML file and the .idea directory, uh, those are, are both metadata that are used by IntelliJ IDEA, IntelliJ IDEA to manage itself. Um, if you're coming out of uh, Eclipse background, this is like a dot .project and a dot .class path file. They're, they really just contain information for the IDE to be able to operate correctly. Um, and again, you know, you can poke around here all you want. This is all just Java stuff, standard Java stuff. Okay, so uh, we know that we're studying test-driven development. So one of the first things we need is a place to put our unit tests. So I'm going to right-click on the uh, top-level project and make a new directory and we're going to call this test. Uh, notice lowercase t-e-s-t. -E uh, that's actually important because SRC is conventionally lowercase also, and consistency is really important. As we move forward, we'll be reading uh, clean code tips, for example, and names really need to be consistent in order to be uh, memorable and usable. So I'll click on OK. Now I have a test directory. Right now, though, this is just a general directory called test. I need to tell IntelliJ that uh, what I really want to do here is have this be a test sources root. So I'm just selecting uh, mark directory as test sources root. There, it changed color to green, which indicates that that's where our tests will live. So uh, let's start working in there. Uh, we know that in Java, we don't just want to make a class at this at this top level. Uh, don't 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 do this. Um, all of our classes should be within a package. So let me just delete that. I just press the delete key. I'm going to right click and make a new package. 
And the convention for these package names is uh, the reverse of your institution or organizational URL. So everything we do together will be in an edu.bsu package. Uh, and after that, you can really use any kind of name you want. Um, CS222 is a nice convention to pick up there. Uh, these package names should be all lowercase with no special characters. So a name like this is, is well formed. A name like, like this is not, right, because it should be all lowercase. So there we go. The naming rules for packages are a little bit different from the other naming rules in Java, but you'll get used to it. OK, I've got a package. Inside this package, I need to put my test case. So I'll right click and say a new Java class. And uh, let me just point out, there's lots of ways to get to that feature of adding a new class. Right? You, could, you could use this menu here. There's keyboard shortcuts. Um, I'm just showing you the way that I like to get there. So I recommend you start with that. And then if you find a way that's more comfortable for you, go for it. So I'm going to call this the hello world test. Um, and this is you know, a really fakey kind of example. All I'm doing is I'm going to write a module called hello world that if we tell it to say hello, it gives us back the string hello, H-E-L-L-O. Um, let's take a quick look at the file that was created here. Uh, notice that by default, IntelliJ IDEA wants to put these uh, created by messages, these comments in there. Um, and when you read chapter four of clean code, you'll see that these are really uh, not helpful. Uh, in fact, they are, are dangerous, these kinds of comments. That kind of information belongs in version control. And later in the semester, we'll be playing more with uh, Git for version control. Um, I'm not going to worry about that in this video. Uh, so I could just select this and press delete, right? That'll get rid of it. But every time I make a new file, it's going to put that there again. So uh, I can save myself a headache by turning that off at the IDE level. So I'm going to go to uh, file. Uh, you know what, just to, to show that I can do this, let me actually delete this and recreate it after I change that setting. So I'm going to go to file and settings. And from here, I'm going to search for um, templates, I think they're called. Um, yeah, file and code templates, that's exactly it. Um, and there's a couple of different options here. Uh, the one I care about here is this file header. See, that's, that's the one created by user on date. And uh, in fact, what I wanted to put there is, is nothing. So <laughs> I'm going to just select that and delete it. And that's probably the easiest way to make those go away. I'll say OK. And, uh, and now if I say new Java class and I say this is hello world test, voila, nice and clean. That's the way I like it. OK. Now let's put in our unit test. So this is going to be a test that says if we ask the hello world module to say hello, it gives us back a string that says hello. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is put in the test annotation. Now notice that immediately turns red because IntelliJ IDEA doesn't know what that means, but it's smart enough to know that I want the JUnit unit testing library. So there's a really useful keyboard shortcut in IntelliJ IDEA, Alt, Enter. Uh, so I'm going to press that now. And Alt, Enter here recognizes that to make this work, I need JUnit on my class path. JUnit 4 is the industry standard. Uh, almost everybody I know of is using JUnit 4. JUnit 5 is brand new, uh, so we're going to stick with JUnit 4 for now. Um, I just press Enter, I'll press Enter again, and that's what we want. Good. So notice how we've been able to successfully import org.junit.test. Uh, and if you poked around over here, you'd see now we have the standard Java 1.8 libraries as well as the JUnit 4 libraries. OK, so I'm going to make a public void uh, test say hello. And so how will this test work? We're going to make a hello world object. Now remember, we don't want to panic about the fact that this turned red um, because part of the art of test-driven development is that we write the code that we want to work before it actually works. We're, we're sort of writing a specification of how we want this to behave. So of course it doesn't work yet. We haven't written the production code yet. Um, hello world, we'll give it a method called say hello, and we'll expect that response to be the string hello. So within JUnit, what I want to do is say assert. Notice it recognizes this as org.junit.assert. Assert dot assert equals. And uh, these assert equals methods always have the same form where first argument is the expected value and the second argument is the actual value. So I expect the string hello to be what I have as the response. So again, this is expected and then actual. Um, 
Assert actually didn't import, but that's okay. I'll click on it and say Alt Enter, Enter again, Enter again, and we've got it. Cool. Now, you probably noticed something kind of weird happened here where this text expected jumped in there, right? But I can't select it. I'm, I'm holding down my mouse, but th this isn't actually code. This is uh, a new feature in IntelliJ IDEA called parameter name hints, and I hate it. <laughs> I really don't like it because it takes up a lot of horizontal space, and if we're doing good API design, we shouldn't need this anyway. Um, so I'm going to strongly recommend that you turn that off. So again, we'll go to File and Settings. And these settings hold for not just this project. We're setting this up for, for all of our IntelliJ IDEA experience. But that's good. We, we really want to have these uh, bad settings turned off. So I'm going to search for Parameter Hint here. And here it is under Appearance. Here, Show Parameter Name Hints. Just turn that right off. We don't want that. There's ways you can set up whitelists and blacklists. No, no, we, we just don't want that. Okay, nice. So that tightened it back up to what it, what's the actual code. Um, again, w one of the main reasons I don't like it is because it's not code, but it's throwing it into the code, and it looks like code. It's just weird, so we won't do that. Okay, now our test is actually well-formed. The only problem is that we're referring to production code that doesn't exist yet. So our next step is to make this Hello World class. Now, we could do this the same way we made Hello World test. We could right click up here and say new uh, package edu.bsu.cs222.hello world. And then we could right click here and say new Java class, hello world. And that would work, right? That's fine. I'm going to show you a different way that I tend to use a lot. And one of the reasons I want to show you this is um, you know, when we're working together, you're going to see me do this a lot because to me it's, it's very natural. Uh, I know that I wrote this thing that doesn't exist yet and I want the tool to make it for me. I want it to do the automatable tasks. I'm going to do the creative work. The tool can do the automated tasks. So I'll say Alt Enter here and the first thing that comes up here is create the class. Yes, that's exactly what I want you to do here, Mr. IntelliJ IDEA. So uh, press Enter to select that and this looks good, right? That's the package we want. The only thing that's bad is it wants to put it in the test folder, right? This, this green colored one. We don't want that. Um, so what I'm going to do is click on this and click on this and say OK. That's where we want it. We want it in the source folder because the Hello World class is production code. Hello World test is test code. OK. Nice. So the tool took care of the uh, kind of dummy work of making this package and then putting the class inside. Very nice. Um, now again, over here we're referring to a method called say hello. Um, that method doesn't exist yet. I could go over here and stub it out. And you know, maybe if your Java is a little rusty, that would be a good exercise. But what I usually do is again let the tool do the stuff that's automatable and hit Alt Enter, create the method, and look at that. It jumped us over to the hello world.java file and put in. Uh, kind of the obvious implementation for say hello. Um, now of course this doesn't compile because it's not returning anything. Um, let's start by returning the empty string. Okay, here we are in test say hello. Everything compiles now to run my tests. As a, as a rule of thumb you always want to run all of your tests, not just the one you're working on. That way you can catch regression defects where something that used to work is suddenly broken. So I'm going to right click on here and say run all tests. This will bring up a new view here within the IDE and it will tell me that this test failed. Comparison failure expected hello actual was the empty string. Uh, there's another way to write these um, which some, some people like. We could put a string here that says um, the object should say hello, for example. We could put another string argument there, and if we run these tests again, which we can easily do with that button, or we could right click here and say run all tests, either one will do the same thing. That gives us a more descriptive error message. So sometimes that's a helpful thing to know, is that you can add an optional argument at the beginning here that describes what the test is doing. Um, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but as long as it's there, I'll just leave it there. Uh, so as we're doing test-driven development, we start by writing these tests that fail. This is what we call 
r the red part of our mantra, red, green, refactor. So we start with red, the test fails. The next thing we do is make the test pass. So that's easy, because here all I have to do to make this pass is change the string here to hello. Now, if I run my tests again, we get the next step, which is green. So again, this mantra is red, green, refactor. So we start with a test that fails, then we make the test pass, and then we clean it up. That's the refactoring. Refactoring means uh, improving the design of the program without changing its behavior. Uh, but for now, I think that should be all you need to get up and running with IntelliJ IDEA, with JDK 1.8, with JUnit. Um, for the sake of your first uh, project configuration kind of pseudo assignment, uh, all you need to do at this step is take a screenshot of what you see and submit that to Blackboard and you get course credit. And not only that, you're ready to start writing your own Java code and you can follow along in everything we do in class. You can uh, work on some of these activities we'll do in class together to uh, build a better understanding of how to program, how to be a software craftsman, how to deal with test-driven development, and all the wonderful stuff we'll do together this semester. I hope this was helpful.